What's going on everybody? Triple Crown 24 back today with a new trade video. This time around it's going to be talking about some, well not some, but one deal I made for inventory purposes. I'll go ahead and show you what I got back. It's my part of the trade. It is a 65 tops Mickey Mantle PSA 3. This is my first Mantle card where it's not an all-star card and not a league leaders card from his playing days. So just very excited to own it. This one is not going into the collection. It's for inventory purposes, so by the time you see this video, it will already be in the store, but it is cool to at least have it for now and for however long I will have it uh, going forward. So it's cool to, uh, to have this. Very awesome. Presents itself incredibly well. And the question will be, what did I give up? to get it and basically what I gave up was my stash of broken dreams uh, as I like to call it so a little backstory is the trading partner that I had on this is on the blowout forums and he has a thread that has in his words been often imitated but never replicated uh, where he has set up this token economy where you can trade in your unwanted game used in autograph cards as well as serial number cards in order to acquire uh, maybe a card that is more desirable to you or a card that is uh, a little bit more valuable in terms of secondary market value. Again, value is, is a subjective thing. Uh, there's secondary market value, and then there's value in the eye of the beholder. But that's a different discussion. Um, and it, it's a token economy where it's pretty much set up where he has a credits system rather than a dollar system. Uh, but it's very much so where one penny equates or equates to 0 0.01 credits or one dollar equates to one credit. Uh, so it's it's not too much of a conversion there, but he calls them credits. And I think that's a very good uh, move on his part as well. It kind of helps. Um, I think it makes his end of the deal like more visual, more appealing to whoever his potential trade partner would be in terms of the calling it credits instead of dollars. Uh, so basically what you can do is you can trade in any game used or autograph card in a pro uniform and it needs to be licensed so Panini baseball cards would not count in this case uh, 2010 or newer for one credit and then you can kind of build up those credits towards a card that he has available and he has a list of everything he has available and for what uh, price or how many credits you would have to give. So for me, what I did is I've made a few trades with him before to get some Miguel Cabrera relics that he had, a lot of triple thread stuff that I, I just love triple threads. So I wanted to pick those up and I basically just used stuff that was in my collection that I felt like I could part with because I didn't really have much attachment to it. So these are the types of cards that I will pick up here. This Cameron Mabin relic and this Pablo Sandoval relic. Now, this Cameron Mabin relic is from 2008 Tops. Uh, the reason that I have this one and why I would be able to trade this one is because he does make exceptions for certain cards like this. Uh, just it's at a discounted rate. So, for example, any 2005 to 2009 relic or autograph card is going to be worth, I believe, 0.7 credits is what he has it at. So it's kind of like it's worth 70 cents. Uh, for him. But this Pablo Sandoval, it's a 2016 Alan Ginter relic. I actually got this in today as well to work towards kind of the next trade with him. Uh, that would be worth one credit. So I have a ton of Lions <laughs> relics uh, from pretty much the entire 2010s decade from guys who just never made it. And I call it my box of broken dreams. It's basically a lot of uh, Lions and Tigers players who never really made it. There's a lot of, and here, here's some blasts from the past for you, Javid Best. Uh, in some cases, I go as far back as Joey Harrington. Um, there is some Titus Young, Ryan Broyles. Eric Ebron's not really a bust. I mean, he's had pretty, he's, he's made a Pro Bowl with the Colts, and now he's doing pretty well with the Steelers. But in terms of a Lions player, he, he just never really made it as a Lions player, although... I don't think they gave him a fair shake. Uh, anyways, uh, Amir Abdullah is another guy like that. So just trading in those guys who I would probably have a very difficult time moving on, you know, on their own. I, there's just not really a market for a Titus Young relic or make Michael a short autograph. 
uh, unless you find a very specific buyer. So you can kind of trade all that stuff in to get something better. Now this mantle was 225 credits uh, and I didn't have enough Michael Ashore, uh, Titus Young, Javi Best, Ryan Broyles types of cards to trade to get this. So I had to actually go out and get some. So recently I shows, and if you watched my last card show recap video, I talked about it briefly. I've been picking up a lot of relic and autograph cards that I can try to get at the dollar range. And most of the time I can get them for less than a dollar. Uh, if I can get them at 50 cents, and that's really the sweet spot where I like to come in at. But generally, you're not going to find a lot of people who are willing to uh, to dump them at 50 cents. Now, if you equate the token economy scale where one credit equals one dollar, I'm really not gaining anything. And I'm also not losing anything when I do it. It's kind of just like a wash if I pick up a relic at a dollar. Um, but for me to be able to get a larger card like this, generally I'm, I'm buying up these large lots or I'm buying up collections where there is these types of relic and autograph cards where I really have a difficult time moving them. So when I'm able to acquire cards uh, such as, say, like this one right here, that kind of just goes into the stack uh, for a future deal. So that's kind of why I look for those types of cards. And I've been picking them up at the shows that I've been to since uh, shows returned to this area. And finally, I had built up enough to get this mantle. Uh, he also accepts serial, serial number cards from 2006 to now. Those are only worth 0.1 credits, so you need 10 to, to get. Um, he's basically valuing them at 10 cents a piece. And it just has to be, uh, I believe, in a pro uniform for those. So with those types of cards, I get a lot of Bowman prospect refractors from like 2012, 2013, 2014, sometimes in some of the dollar boxes that I'll buy out. Those are the type of cards where it's really tough unless those guys are still somewhere in the minors where maybe like a IP autograph guy can go out and get them signed or something, It's or maybe someone knows them. Uh, it's tough to move those types of cards, so what I'll do is I'll usually set those cards aside as well rather than putting them in the store, and then I will... Uh, Put those aside just to keep building it up towards this trade and i decided that i was ready to cash out and it netted me a mantle card so that is a story behind how i acquired this mantle and uh, completed my largest trade to date on the uh, unwanted game used and autos for gold thread over on blowout so hopefully you found this video interesting i know i rambled on quite a bit but uh I thought I would try to give as much detail about the story and how this came to be as possible. So thank you so much for listening to today's video. I'll be back with some pretty cool stuff later this week. So I'll see you then. Have a good one. Stay safe.